Hey, this is Vu, and this is going to be four different levels of movement from beginner to professional, and I've brought in an actual current CS Pro to break down his own movement for the final one. But to begin with, we're going to be looking at a silver demo here to show you what a beginner level of movement looks like and what he could improve. So the first thing is, he's kind of sitting in the middle of the open near truck here. Generally, you'd want to be playing that headshot angle. Uh, then he ends up moving forward and rotating swiftly back. And as he makes his way into the window here, you're going to see him over peak an angle when he knows it's already clear, sitting in the middle of the open, and then he stops to spray his USP. Generally, when you have a pistol in hand, you want to be moving at all times, AD, ADing, because it doesn't affect your accuracy too much, and hopefully you can try to get at the higher level um, shots during that cooldown between hitting A and D, because there's that slight moment of accuracy but most importantly you want to be moving the entire time and you can see that he's also unsure of his positioning as he kind of moved out of that area went back moved out went back and now he's going to hear a player behind him but he's just not quite aware enough to take that player down and realize it so i'll be taking a look at a few different clips from each level to give you a full idea of what it looks like and we're going to be looking at zub here again uh, this time he's got a negev which requires exactly zero movement and uh uh, you know, we, we take those. We take those. Next up, we're going to have Face It Rank 2 with ACS YHY on Mirage here and on an actual gun round as well. He's going to be trying to attack the A bomb site, but you can see some errors here as well. So kind of just running with the nade out there to start with. Then you're going to see that his movement while bursting is not perfect. So his teammates gets flashed. He's going to shoot some bullets here, and I'm not too focused on the aim. However, what he does is he shoots a few bullets, and then he stops, and then he shoots another few bullets, but he didn't actually move at all between that. So if you have to wait long enough for your recoil to reset, obviously you want to be trying to strafe to make yourself harder to hit. Because if his opponent is just spraying at him while he's letting his recoil reset, it's going to be trivial for his opponent to get the kill in that circumstance. Following that, he knows this opera is in CT spawn, and he's going to hold the angle for probably a little bit longer than he should, but what's important is that he walks out knowing the opera is on the angle while scoped up, and that should be an automatic death, really. Following that, he's going to play this angle here, and the initial way he plays it is actually not bad at all, but what happens that's poor is on the second frag. So holding the angle here, he gets off of the angle, so he's not playing the standard angle. He gets the off angle a little bit here to catch the first frag, but he doesn't reposition on the second one at all. You can see he's kind of thinking of what to do next. It's still processing, but as far as this second player here, Sven the Boat, is concerned, uh, ACSYHY is in the exact same position that he was when he killed JXS. And that's not what you really ever want to have happen. Sometimes you'll see players in this situation strafe wide, and sometimes you'll see them close up and get back in a sandwich to reload. Either one is okay, but standing still is not, as he's just going to get peeked out and killed instantly. So we're going to call this one an intermediate level CS player. It should be around the DMG level in matchmaking. And we've got the player here, Goop, with the op in hand. And... Movement is fairly important with the op on T side specifically, and you can't just post up on angles. You're going to see he does things a bit more coordinated than you saw in the beginner level plays, but there are still things that are mistakes, things that go wrong in places where he gets a bit lost. So you're going to see to begin with here, opping T stairs, he's moving back and forth. So when this player crosses over, he's not in position and he doesn't hit the shot quickly enough. He has to strafe out into the angle to hit that shot, which isn't really what you want. Then he follows that with a pretty clean peek onto the player on car and gets the pretty clean kill as well, although he does do a weird double scope thing. Following that up, he's going to make his way over to Banana, and team has already picked up a couple kills, so they're going to try and head into the B bomb site quickly, and you're going to see the movement here into the bomb site is not perfect. He's going to be hugging the close wall there. Uh, usually, you want to be as far away from the close wall as possible when you're peeking out, and if he is going to hug that, sometimes you see people go close oranges like this. However, they always jump on this railing to change the angle of elevation and get a peek out, 
or they jump all the way up on top of oranges to again change that angle of elevation. Otherwise, this play doesn't make too much sense whatsoever. And he also should have been more aggressive because his teammate was taking fire from this player at second oranges and he was kind of fiddling with his guns and he was playing a little too scared instead if he had kind of swung out with op in hand very likely he gets the trade on the initial play instead now he's in an awkward spot and he's gonna go for a peek and it's just a very weak peek at that he doesn't peek all the way out to clear the exact angle he has to stray well scoped in and can't blame him for the fact that the smoke in ct spawn was whiffed by whoever threw it uh might have been him but whoever threw it but he very likely would have struggled to get that kill on the player there because he scoped in as he tried to walk his way out. It just, it had the right idea. He wanted to scope in as he peeked on the angle, but not the perfect execution. And for the next one of the intermediate level play, it should be around the same rank as it's in the exact same game. And we've got Tavin. And he's going to be on the opposing team, and he's going to go for a peek towards Banana here. And you can see he's just a little too static when he peeks towards Car. When you're playing against Deagles especially, you want to be trying to keep moving as much as possible, because anytime you're standing still, you allow a Deag to kind of peek right into you and get a couple of shots. You can see me on the other side there. I peeked into the angle and got a clean shot off. And obviously that shot doesn't hit in this case, but you never want to make it easy for a deagle to peek into you and land a clean shot. So standing still, probably not what you want to be doing. And he does that a few times here. He does a good job on the repeat by shooting through the car there, shooting through the wood to get that kill, making sure he's trying to draw out at least one shot before going for the actual peek. And he's just hunting for frags. So going for another peek there, not necessarily recommended, but not too far from what you might expect. And doing it in that way drew out, again, a couple of shots and made it a bit easier for himself, a bit less risky as well. Then, going to wait a little while because the flank went over to the B site from CT spawn. And weirdly, he picks up the op here. Generally, you want to be sticking with rifles in this type of situation. But he does a good job on the peaks. He's making sure he's far from the close wall, which we saw the other player mess up. Um, being very close to the wall and he's going to be trying to do a fairly similar situation to what we saw from Goop in the previous one where he's peeking out on a player that's going to be near oranges except here again he's along the back wall he could be close up and trying to go over the top of oranges which is something you'll often see however that does require some level of timing so instead the safe play oftentimes uh, and the, the usually smart play is to stay along the back wall here strafe along it so that you're far enough from the angle and you can see goop is very close to oranges and he can get a shot off there so pretty solid movement a couple of questionable moments but overall not bad and that's what you're expecting from intermediate level play next up we'll be looking at this noob called vu uh, it is my own pov and my matchmaking rank isn't perfect but we'll call this advanced level play uh, i am around 2500 elo on face it or something like that uh, so I am decent at the game, I hope. We're going to be heading in towards Banana in this one. Molly on top of car. I delay to make sure that the Molly can actually tick anyone that might be holding that angle for half a second. Then you're going to see me pre-fire on the corner here through the Molly uh, to try and catch anybody that might be standing there. Clearing out each angle one by one, stopping before... Uh, I actually would notice them just to make sure that if they are there, I can get the free kill. And then this is a kind of play where you have two options. You can narrow peek towards CT. I feel like the opera usually wins that one, but oftentimes you can jump across an angle and then they'll peek out into you to try and grab that kill. And it's just a completely free kill for you when they do so. It's fairly rare for an opera to be holding this angle wide enough to catch you if you jump across. Although it does occasionally happen when you're looking at pugs, sometimes taking that risky play is what you want to do or what you feel comfortable doing. Then I'm going to smoke CT. I'm not sure I spot that guy out in CT actually as he peeks me, but I jiggle just to make sure nobody's pushed through. Then a flash over and a post on top of coffins in case an opera's there. Uh, usually if they re-peek out on me, I feel fairly comfortable actually winning that engagement. So just another peek, hold that, peek out onto the place below coffins, which is a bit more risky because I'm moving in while scoped, uh, which has cost me a couple of times. So maybe that's why I'm not professional, who knows. And then I'm going to be walking in and walking, of course, is... Uh, 
dangerous walking into an angle, but sometimes the danger is worth the risk as I'm waiting for my teammates to group up with me, but we're 3v5, so I want to up the pace at least a little bit and get some more further control uh, before they get to me, even though it's a bit more risky. And still just clearing out angles, walking into that angle there again, potentially not perfect, but sometimes you have to do it. And missing the jump up onto the ledge there, you know, it happens to the best of us. And just some kind of crazy movement to try and get kills back, but unfortunately CT not smoked. So next up, we've brought in the big guns. We finally made it. Got another pro player on the channel other than Vu. It's Drone X Envy, North American professional. Let's see. It. Hey guys, uh, I'm Drone, and I'm going to go through a couple clips I have and explain my movement a little bit and uh, how I get these kills exactly and how it helps me. So on this overpass round, I'm going down con with a scout. You know, I'm obviously walking, so they don't know I'm going to peek them down here if there's a player holding for me. Uh, I set up for this peek preemptively, like I know I'm going to take this peek. So I'm, I'm positioning myself, putting my crosshair about where I think it's going to be when I peek the uh, angle. I'm expecting him to be holding on the left against that wall, you know, just around the corner. That's the angle I'm playing for. So I'll actually scope before I peek uh, in the position where I think when I move my body out, my crosshair should be about on his head. Um, I prefer scoping before I peek rather than peeking, you know, scoping and then flicking or whatever else. I feel like it's more consistent for me. So uh, here I'm going to take this peek. I, uh, I swing wide and quickly. I don't jiggle because uh, even though I know the probability of an opper being back there is pretty high, um, I know he's not super ready for me to, you know, swing on him. And especially with a scout, uh, it's you move pretty quick compared to with an op, so he might not be holding as wide. Just try to get a quick shot off. Uh, I missed him. And after that, I know that I'm getting flanked. You know, I can hear the footsteps. So I turn around and get a, a pretty quick counter strafe with the scout shot. Um, this is a little bit to do with my movement because it was a really fast counter strafe, but mostly it was just a flick, a nice shot. Um, followed up with that second kill. Another quick counter strafe, same thing. You know, you want to tap the opposite movement key before you uh, shoot to make sure you're accurate. Um, I pick this guy's AK up, come down the stairs, and I actually jiggle this opper and shoot a little bit just to make him bite. I uh, may have jiggled a little too far here. Um, but I'm trying to make him shoot at me to get that player behind me to flank again. You know, even though I just killed two of his teammates, I want him to feel like he can confidently come down those stairs and kill me. So I jiggle here, get the shot out of the upper, wait for this guy that is flanking, get a kill on him with another quick counter strafe. Come back down, throw another jiggle just to get the upper complacent, you know, get his crosshair a little closer to the wall, waiting for my arm again to maybe, you know, catch me on my jiggle, and then I swing wide. And uh, my pre-aim's accurate this time, and I get him. So that was the first clip. And our second clip here is on Dust2, actually, and it ends up being a, a 1v5, you know, played around mid. And uh, my movement and positioning has a lot more to do with, you know, why I got the kills this round, rather than, you know, quick flicks or fast aim. So uh, right now I'm just, you know, you'll notice I'm ADing while I hold this angle. Um, I actually saw a bit of a CT there a little while ago, or I thought I did. So I'm waiting and expecting someone to peek mid, especially because my teammate just flashed, you know, I think a CT player is going to come and peek and try to get a kill on someone coming out. So I'm holding for him, but I'm making sure not to stay still. I don't actually get a fight here, but I always am ADing to make sure if I do get peeked, uh, the player has a lot harder of a time hitting me than if I was crouched standing still or if I wasn't moving at all. You always want to make yourself a hard target, and that's what I'm doing. So eventually I feel comfortable enough to walk out, and uh, I'm isolating fights out mid here. And notice I back up against this left wall as far as I can so that the player on the left side of mid would have to come all the way out to the right to kill me. And if you notice, I have a teammate on cat uh, holding that left side mid. So he can't do that. I'm isolating a CT player if he's here. Uh, there is no player. He doesn't peek, but I hear this CT rotating off of the three kills his teammates got. So obviously I'm going to wait and hold this angle for him as soon as I hear him rounding the corner. This player does actually, he jumps a bit and jiggles me a little bit, which is good on his part. Uh, he has his knife out, but I do some damage, and then you'll see me backing up away from the back wall to isolate that angle again. So I'm isolating the left player here instead of the CT player. So if there is someone coming CT after those kills, he's not going to be able to see me as well if I back up against the other wall while I fight this player. Uh, so I swing out, I finish the kill, and then I know. I try to quickly flick onto the scouter that's on the rafters that I see. Um, while I'm doing that, you'll notice I'm actually spraying to try to keep him from repeeking me while I slide back into the wall to get back into cover because this isn't a fight that I want to take for too long. So then we switch around again, and I'm now isolating the CT angle again like I initially was, and I'm waiting for a reaction out of a CT. After I just took that fight with that guy on the rafter, you know, I'm thinking one of those long players that just killed my team might come back and try to you know trade or get the kill. So I wait a while. And on my part, I didn't wait long enough. So I unpeaked a little bit here, right as he dropped. A bit bad timing, a little bit of me not being patient enough. But he actually tags me. 
Um, I re-peek here because I'm in a 1v4 situation and, you know, this is a fight I want to take. You know, you're in disadvantages in these situations and you want to get every fight you can isolated. And this is a clear 1v1 that I could have and this opportunity might not present itself later. So I take it even though I'm at a disadvantage swinging with being tagged and all and I get the kill on that guy. Um, and then I realize, you know, now I have an isolated 1v1. This guy I shot at earlier, I heard him up a little bit. He's still left mid, still scouting. I know he's not going to push me while I took that CT fight. You know, he has a scout. He's playing the 3v1 a little safer now that it's gone from a 5v1 to a 3v1. Um, but I know he's not going to have taken a big fallback or he's not going to be pushing. So I know he's around that same area, probably holding for me to re-peek. So I actually just toss a nice flash here, pretty pop over the corner, and I get him completely white. He's totally blind out in the open with a scout. That's a completely free kill. You know, re-check my CT angles, and then I go back to jump up Xbox. Uh, I whiff the jump because, you know, I'm not perfect. Uh, throw a flash, make the jump this time. That flash I use to uh, peek cat is so that if a player is, you know, peeking this angle and holding for me to do this jump, he has to turn from that flash or he has to be blind while I jump up. And it gives me a better chance, right? Um, I actually hear a player scout scope here. I actually, is a second before I pause before. There is a player behind these stairs and I heard him scope. So I know he's there. I know in a 2v1, there's likely going to be them grouped up. You know, you always want to play together in a 2v1, so I'm assuming they're going to be next to each other here. So I throw this molly because I know this angle is probably where he's playing. You'll notice I only peek out slightly wide here. I don't completely come out to where the bricks are because if there are two players there, again, I want to isolate. I don't want to take 2v1s. You know, I don't want them both looking at me while I'm shooting them. I want to get the 1v1 against this player and then take another 1v1, and that's what clutching is all about. So I force him out of his corner, just take a wide enough angle to kill him running away. And since he's running, you know, he has an op and whatever else, he's uh, he's not in a great position, right? So I get the free kill on that guy. And here I am swinging out. Now it's a 1v1, you know, everyone else is dead, and I know this player is going to be behind him somewhere. I'm expecting him to be on the bricks, on that cat railing, waiting for me. So you see, I pre-aim for that, I start swinging, but he's actually a lot closer than I expected, and it's a quick counter strike flick down one tap. You know, that was a nice shot, and then that, that actually ended up winning us the game. Uh, so I hope that... Uh, showed you guys some stuff that you maybe can take into your games with you and maybe you can apply to your game and thanks for watching wow that was some captivating and mesmerizing analysis by drone now you may think nacs pros are basically silvers in europe but let you be the judge of that one thanks for watching i hope this helped if you enjoyed the content if you want to see more pros featured on the channel feel free to leave a comment or otherwise can sub to the Patreon, to my second channel, or to this channel, turn on the notifications, catch the next video. Thanks for watching.